Hello and welcome to my video, how to lose customers and alienate people. Now, your time is busy and valuable, so I'm going to get straight to the point, tell you what you're going to get from this video and how it's going to help you. The video is going to be about 10 minutes long and it's going to show you what you need to do to thrive in today's world of social media, empowered customers, customer feedback, ever demanding and increasing competition, worldwide threats, worldwide changes and all of that stuff that's going on all the time that we all know about, it's all talked about, but we are struggling to deal with. Okay, so first of all, what is happening in the world today? What's going on? Okay, the answer is that the world is going undergoing a massive change, a change so great in scope that it's probably as, have a greater as impact in the world as the invention of the printing press. Now, if you think about the printing press, what did it spawn? Well, it spawned the Reformation, the Renaissance, it spawned revolutions all around the world, it spawned the Industrial Revolution, which changed all of our lives forever. Before the printing press, all of the information in the world was controlled by the church and the aristocracy. But people lived in small communities where reputation was everything and people worked together and lived or died by their reputation. After the printing press, things changed and the world got skew if The world went mad for about 400 years, where money controlled everything, money ruled. You could persuade people to do ridiculous things by, in effect, bribing them with money or paying them in a particular way. And we see examples of this all over the, all over the place. The, the world has been raped ecologically. Um, there's the, the current financial crisis is all about handling money badly, etc., etc. Et so for 400 years, things have gone wrong, okay? And what the problem with that is, is we tend to believe that things going wrong, what's called the industrial age model, is normal. We tend to believe that what has happened so far is, is how it should be and what, what goes on. So what's the industrial age model? How does it work? Well, first of all, between the ages of about naught and five, you as a child grow up and you learn to walk and talk. And your mother in particular, but your parents say to you, fantastic, first step, well done, that's absolutely brilliant. Phone all the relatives, get everyone organised. Great, so lots of, lots of encouragement, lots of holding people accountable, lots of getting the best performance out of people. Then what happens? You go to school and you are told to sit down, shut up and do as you're told. And that's what happens for the rest of your life. That's the industrial age model. The industrial age model is command and control. There's someone at the top who's in charge, make everything happen. Your role is to, to sit, sit down, shut up and do as you're told. And that's got us into a terrible mess in the world today. So what we're going to talk about today is how to combat that, how to run your business, how to run your team, how to run your group, whatever it is, in a much more conscious way for long-term success, long-term effectiveness, and how to avoid losing customers and alienating people. But what we'll talk about is how do, you, how do you lose customers and alienate people because that's a lot more fun and it makes the point a lot stronger. Before we start that, two points. Number one, who is the customer? Well, the customer is everyone. First of all, you have your internal customer. They're the people you're working with. They are the most important person because if, you, if they don't work with you, if they're not engaged, if they're not loyal, if they're not working together as a team with you, you're stuffed. You can't do anything. So number one is your internal customer. Number two, of course, is your paying customer. Whether or not they're paying you now, whether or not they're dealing with you now, they're the people you deal with, whether you get make pay from them or not today. Because if you don't get money from them today, what about tomorrow? And what about what they'll tell their friends about you behind your back? You have no control over that. So that's that. And the third person, of course, is everybody else, everyone you deal with. You, and that, this is what's called your reputation in the market. What is your reputation? What are you about? Would people recommend you whether or not they've used you themselves or not? So that's the first point. The second point is going back to the social revolution. I cannot emphasize this enough. We are going through a massive revolution in the world today. Everything is changing. Everything that we have lived through and we've experienced as normal is now changing. Customers are empowered. Social media is driving things forward. Your reputation can, can spread through the world at the speed of light. And if you don't believe me on this, just have a look at YouTube and Google the following things. Google United Breaks Guitars and have a look at that story. And you can see the power of social media, the way things are changing. Also Google 
body form responds. Fantastic use of social media to, to respond to uh, an online complaint, a, a post on Facebook that was, was, was perhaps a bit tongue in cheek, but maybe a bit unfair, who knows. But the whole way of doing business is changing. There is a revolution going on. Please get this right. What has worked in the past will not work in the future. Remember Darwin's law. It is not the strongest of the species that survives. It is those most adaptable to change. And change is going on at a rate that's completely unprecedented and never seen before. That's why we're seeing so many large businesses going out of business at the drop of a hat. For example, General Motors, largest company in the world, 50 years ago, went bankrupt three years ago at the date of this recording of, the, of this, this uh, video. So it's not the strongest of the species that survived, it is those most adaptable to change. So here goes how to lose customers and alienate people. And of course, duh, all you've got to do is do the opposite. So it's four and a half steps. Let's look at the half step first, because that's be a bit of fun. The half step is stop thinking that what's worked in the past will work in the future. It won't. You've got to change. What we've always done, if we always do it, we'll always get the results we, what we got. And in a world of diminishing return on advertising, diminishing return on marketing, diminishing customer spend, increasing customer demands, increasing customer feedback, increasing social media, increasing demands of your people, increasing costs and overheads. What has worked in the past will not work in the future. We may be getting away with it as of the date of this recording, 2012, but we won't. Put the clock forward 10 years, the whole thing will have changed. Everything will be much, much more extreme than it is now, of course. So stop thinking that what you've always done is what you should always should do. You don't have to do that. In fact, you mustn't do that because if you do that, you won't survive. You have to adapt to survive. The other thing is you've got to stop thinking that cheaper is better. Cheaper is not better. People will pay for quality. Look at the results of John Lewis. Look at how many people buy Mercedes, BMW. Look at the fact that Rolls Royce had a record year last year. Look at all these things, people buy quality. If they didn't buy quality, we would all spend our, hotel, our holidays in youth hostels or in tents, and we would all drive around. Well, we wouldn't drive around at all. We'd all go around on bikes. And, it wouldn't, if, and we'd all eat the cheapest possible food, and we'd all live in one-bedroom uh, basement studio apartments. Doesn't make sense. Cheapest is not best. Yes, there's a market for cheapest, but beware. Remember that Poundland are suffering at the hands of the 99p shop. So cheapness is always short term until someone else is cheaper. So cheap is no good. There is no one solution. Okay, this is not a one solution quick fix. Yes, we're going to organize our social media. We're going to have a fantastic social media marketing campaign. Bollocks, it's not going to work. We're going to reorganize everything and we're going to make sure that everyone's more empowered. It's not going to work. One stop solution is not going to work. This has to be holistic and continual. Okay, so how to lose friends and alienate, sorry, lose customers and alienate people. Number one, have a money focused mission. Now, this is, means that we're in business to make money. So everything we do has got to make money. So the best way to do that is let's sell lots of payment protection insurance, whether customers need it or not. Let's make sure that our jewellery is the cheapest crap we can possibly buy and then flog it with great marketing. Let's cover up our hedge funds and our investment funds in lots of exciting words and make them look like AAA rated businesses. That'll be great. We're here to make money. Yes, 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 yes. No, it's going to screw you. You are not here to make money. Of course, we'll talk about what you're here to do in a minute. So, uh, however, remember that, of course, we're in business to make money is normal. It's the industrial age mindset. Everyone believes that and they're all wrong. Number two, how to lose customers and alienate people. Let's make our processes more efficient and spend our time cutting waste and unnecessary costs. Mm, well, efficient processes, of course they're important. However, 
how are you going to make your processes efficient? Well, the best thing to do is we'll cut out, we won't answer the phone, we'll get a machine to answer the phone, that'll be a lot more efficient. Uh, we won't um, do feedback, we'll, make sure we'll put a feedback form in the post or send you an email. Um, we won't um, ask you whether you want to be marketed at or not, we just blam out our marketing no matter what because it's much more efficient to do it that way because we just do the same for everybody. Um, we will not uh, invest in customer service people because they're very expensive, we'll just have a much better marketing and sales machine and we'll get more and more sales. Is this going to work? What do you think in the, in the age of the empowered customer, the joined up business and social media? Okay, so how to lose customers and alienate people. Point number two, focus on making all your processes efficient. Uh -uh. Number three, number three, how to lose customers and alienate people. Have blue sky sessions and annual reviews and strategy meetings and always go the extra mile for the customer. Hmm, that's going to work, is it? Oh, this is, so you put this new strategy in place, you've had a blue sky session, the marketing department have been on an away day, the board have been to stay in a four-star hotel. What's going to happen? You're going to come back with these fantastic new strategy ideas. We've had this reorganisation, we've got a new strategy. You know, I remember 1988 when I worked for a pub, for a brewery, 1988 was the year of Heineken. Oh yeah. And what about... Customer Service Week. Well, you know, October is Customer Service Week. Well, what about the other 51 years of the uh, 50 on, 51 weeks of the year? What about those? We're not going to give any customer service in those weeks, are we? Okay, so this sort of stuff doesn't work. And what about when you tell your people to go the extra mile? What do you think they say? What do you think we're already trying to do? We're already doing our best. So this old sort of, you know, business school processes, you know, blue sky, strategy, go the extra mile. Not going to get great results. So that's another way how to lose customers and alienate people. Why does it lose customers? Because it's a bit like driving your car forward one minute, reverse the next minute, sideways the next minute. No one knows who you are, what you stand for, where you're going or what it's all about. And you're changing all the minutes. You don't stand for anything. If you don't stand for anything, you lose everything. Number four. How to lose customers and alienate people. Number four, measure money obsessively. Yes, money is the only thing that matters after all, so we've got to measure money. Yeah, so um, if we haven't made budget this year, the best thing to do is we'll cut out customer service. We'll cut that down a bit. We'll definitely cut out training. Don't want to train our people. I mean, Usain Bolt, you know, didn't win the 100 metres through training, did he? Just luck, you know. It's a, a training doesn't make any difference. Johnny Wilkinson d didn't bother to train when he was top of his game, did he? No, I just got just, just sort of luck, you know. We'll just cut out all the unnecessary expense and training and all this old rubbish because we've got to measure money and money is <coughs> the only thing that matters and money, we want our money, when do we want it? When do we want our money? Well, we want it now. Well, what about tomorrow? What about next week? What about next month? What about next year? What about long term? What about customer loyalty? Well, it, we don't measure that. There's no measure for customer loyalty in money terms. So therefore, that's irrelevant bollocks that we don't pay any attention to. And where is that going to get you in today's market of the empowered customer, social media and your constant feedback? OK. Oh, and by the way, the other thing to do is if you really have to pay attention to the customer, why not do a customer satisfaction survey? We'll do a 20-question customer satisfaction survey. We'll whack it out by email. It's nice and easy to do that. Put on Survey Monkey or other old Tosh, you know. And we've got a 3% return on that. That's really good. Well, what about the other 97% of your customers who didn't return it? You know, so customer satisfaction service, are they going to do anything for you? I don't think so. So, how to annoy people, lose customers. How to lose customers and annoy people. Number one. Have a money-focused mission. Number two, focus your processes on efficiency above everything else. Number three, have constant blue sky strategy changes and meetings and throw this thing all around because that's what managers are paid to do. And number four, measure money. Squeeze everyone for money. Measure, measure, measure. And what's that going to do? All of that is going to lose customers and annoy people and put you out of business. And that is what we call 
the industrial age model. And that's why it goes wrong. Now, if you want to know what to do, just buy my book. Just look at the, the, the processes that I've, I suggest to you. In a nutshell, have a customer-focused mission. If you do the right thing by the customer, remember who the customer is, it's everyone you deal with. If you do the right thing by the customer, the profits will follow. Number two, put, focus your processes and strategies on the customer's real needs, not on your business efficiency. You know, make it easy and pleasant and make your, your business trustworthy and the customers will flock to you and recommend you to other people. But that takes a bit of time, a bit, a bit of money, and a bit of intelligence. And number three, don't have these blue sky strategy sessions and all this strategy and process change. Continually go the extra inch. It's the Japanese idea of Kaizen. It's the process of continual ongoing improvement. It's one inch per person per week using the go the extra inch process and the go the extra inch session. Please contact us for more details. Have a look at our material or even buy the book and it'll tell you exactly what to do. And lastly, <laughs> measure. What measures are going to work for you? Well, money is important. Of course money is important. Without money, we can't survive. But a measure of money is just a measure of something that's happened in the past. It's not a good indicator of the future. Wouldn't it be so much nicer if we had an indicator of the future? Having no indicator of the future is like someone says to you, what's the weather going to do tomorrow? And you say, oh, I'm looking out the window, it's quite cloudy, so it's probably going to rain tomorrow. Hold on a second. Does that make any sense? Cloudiness today doesn't mean anything. Could, anything could happen tomorrow. Okay, so have a measure, a barometer in your business. Customer loyalty and feedback and internal feedback. Fantastic, simple, 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 powerful measures to help you predict the future, give you a barometer of future success. So how to annoy customers and alienate people? Do all the wrong things, how to win customers, win loyalty and rejuvenate and energize people, do all the right things. Simple stuff, but very hard to do because we have been programmed and encouraged and taught to do it in the industrial age model. And in the customer empowered information world we live in, the industrial age model doesn't work anymore. So contact us for free information, contact us for coaching, contact us for training, buy the book on, e on uh, Amazon or eBay if you want. Um, great or poor. And the second one, sales through service. Okay, there's plenty of other books I'd recommend by other authors as well. Great one by Grant Leboff called Sticky Marketing. Uh, another fantastic book by my great mentor, Stephen Covey. The Third Alternative, fantastic piece of work. The Speed of Trust by his son Stephen M. R. Covey, fantastic book. These are great stuff. Look, learn, get yourself ready for the future because the past is past. Good luck.